Hello guys, welcome to Noble Haven. Today we'll be talking about the sale. And I want you to give me rapt attention. In a matter of less than 15 minutes, we are going to cover grounds and I hope that you benefit from this presentation. Great. As I said earlier in my previous video, my name is Ms. Enki and my ultimate goal is to ensure that I make anatomy and physiology and all those difficult nursing courses as relatable as possible. Great. It's only a right that we start from the cell because after all, it is the basic units of life. Everything that we are right now all started with the cell. So the first lesson should definitely be about the cell. So this is the image of the cell, a simpler version. We have a more complicated version, but you know, as nurses, we are not expected to know like the hardcore science, but at least something significant to help us do our work, to help us understand um, what we are doing is what we are going to focus on. So basically this is a simple structure of the human cell. Now we have a modern cell theory, that kind of a, a summarize, uh, everything about the cell. It basically says three things. One, that the cell is the smallest functional organizational and reproductive unit of all living things. It means that if you are a living organism, whatever you are right now is a reflection of your cells. Whatever is going on in your cell is what will de determine how you would function, how you be, your systems will be organized, and how you reproduce. The second theory or the second aspect of the theory says that all cells come from a pre-existing cell. So it means that no cell dropped out of the sky. So even you right now, as you are, you are a product of your parent's cell. So your parents, after they conceived you, you first started as a one cell organism, which is called the zygote, and then you divided to become who you are right now. And it is so with many or all the multicellular Organism that is uh, organisms with multi cell or numerous cells because mind you there are organisms with just one cell Great and the third um, assumption is that all living things are made up of cells. So if you say you are a living thing The basic unit or your basic unit is cell you can't be made up of any other thing So in a sense we are like a, a, a combination of billions of cells That means humans great so there are basically two types of cells or categories. We have the prokaryotic cells and then the eukaryotic cells. So the prokaryotic cells are basically mostly bacteria cells. And these cells, the difference between the two is that one have organelles or the organelles that exist in one of the prokaryotic do not have membranes. So they are just scattered anyhow. But with the eukaryotic, most of their organelles or the little miniature organs that the cells have are mostly covered with membranes. So everything is kind of organized. Everybody is in their cell, in their, their self-contained well packaged in the eukaryotic cells. And humans, we are under the uh, category of the eukaryotic cells. Great. So now why are we even bordering ourselves with cell, 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 cell? You see, these are some of the important uh, functions of the cell that I want to talk about. So first of all, it's for support. So just think about what blocks or bricks do for a building. The stronger your, your bricks are or blocks are, the stronger or the well supported your building is. So it, it applies to the same thing when it comes to the cells. The healthier and stronger your cells are, the more supported you are. The fragile or healthy your cell is, the less support you get. Then the growth aspect, that is the second function of the cell that I want to talk about. The cell is responsible for us growing. That is why when you started as a unicellular organism, as a zygote, when your parents first you know, fertilized, then you grew, you mitose, it go through the process of mitosis or cell division to become who you are right now. And then homeostasis, when we say homeostasis, we are talking about everything that the body needs to do or the cells needs to do to ensure that there's a stable environment for people to be healthy you know maintain stability and as we say the cell is the basic unit of life so if your cells have good homeostasis then it means generally you are okay 
So the cell functions to maintain homeostasis. And then energy production. Most of us, when we are weak, we try to get some energy drink to take. We take the energy drink and we don't even bother. We know that it's going to work. How does it work? It's the cell. The cell has to convert the glucose that you have taken in into usable energy form. And that is called ATP. It's something that you later learn, glycolysis. But let's just leave it at that um, place. So the, the cell kind of converts the glucose that you have taken into usable energy for your body to have the energy to, to do whatever it wants to do. So energy projection is also on the shoulders of the cell. Great. And let's go to reproduction. We know the popular fertilization. Without the cells of your mother, that is the ovum and the sperm coming together for fertilization, you won't exist. So without cells, no reproduction. And then metabolism. We all hear about metabolism. Your metabolism is slow. Your metabolism is fast. What are we talking about? We're talking about everything that the cell needs to do to ensure that you are whole, you are intact. If it needs to break things down, if it needs to build things up, all that process, the catabolism and anabolism aspects of metabolism, all happens in the cell. So the cell will ensure that your metabolism is healthy. Great. Now, we are going to talk about 10 important parts or organelles or structures of the animal cell. And the reason I'm saying 10 important because there are several aspects of the uh, human cell or animal cell that we can talk about. But these are like what we need to know about, if not for anything. As for this one, we need to know. Great. So the first thing we'll talk about is the cell membrane. Now, the cell membrane, you think about it, or the plasma membrane, you think about it as an immigration officer at the border of a country. So it kind of is a semi-permeable, as in it's like a sieve, you know. It allows certain things in and prevents certain things from passing through. So the cell or plasma membrane is what determines what goes in and what comes out so that it ensures some certain stability because at the border, the immigration won't allow any negative uh, things to pass into the country. It's going to sieve it out. That is what the cell membrane or plasma membrane does. Now let's go into the cell itself. So we look at this area, all this area that do not have organelles. The space that is like light pink or light purple, we say the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is like the space that uh, you find areas in the cell that you find that do not, let's say, are empty. You know, so they they are like jelly-like uh, substance filling all the cells. So all these organelles that you see kind of rest in it. They kind of hug these organelles, give them support. That's the cytoplasm. Now let's talk about this guy, this guy here, um, ribosome. This round thing here is, they're talking about ribosome. Ribosome is a very important structure or organelle in the cell. We'll talk about that later. This is where it is produced, in the nucleus. Great. Now ribosome, when it's produced, comes out and is scattered around the cytoplasm and some are embedded in the endoplasmic reticulum. Great. And what ribosome does is it produces protein. Now, as you learn anatomy and physiology further, you realize that everything that the, 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 the body is based on is protein. Our signals that we send, the nerves ending, our DNA is protein. So without protein, humans cannot survive. So ribosome is that guy that produces all these proteins that um, um, goes ahead to help us function normally. Now, I said when the ribosome are produced from the nucleus, they come out and then some of them embed on this structure. You see how close this structure is to the cellular membrane, the nuclear membrane, because this is the nucleus. Yes. And when they embed, they make that this structure rough. And so this structure is called endoplasmic reticulum. And what it does is it kind of packages the uh, protein and serve as a highway to transport this protein within the cell. Okay, now let's look at this, this, this boss here, this big round thing. That is what we call the nucleus. It's like the headquarters of, 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 the, of, of the cell. It determines whatever happens. It, it sends the command to determine however each one will act. So that is the headquarters. So look at the nucleus as the headquarters of the cell. Now we come to this mitochondria, this guy here that's like a sausage. 
mitochondria is also a very important organelle. You remember I talked about how the cell will have to convert the glucose that you take into usable energy ATP. This is the guy that does it. Without mitochondria, you cannot process energy. It does this through the process called res cellular respiration. Now let's move to this guy called lysosome. Lysosome is like a zoom lion or the waste a management company in the cell. It does all the cleaning of dead, um, worn out debris that the cell produces. It does that. Now let's come here and talk about this girl, this baby girl here. It's also part of this endoplasmic reticulum, but this is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The reason why it is called that way is it doesn't have ribosomes embedded in it, so it's smooth. Now what it does mainly is detoxification removing waste products and ensuring that your cell is free from waste products. Good. Now let's look at these tiny guys here. They are called microtubules and filaments. So these microtubules are like cytoskeleton. They are referred to as cytoskeleton. They form the basis for skeletal support for the cell to maintain its shape. So imagine yourself without a, a, a skeleton. You'll be just falling apart everywhere. So these guys provide that support. And then we go to the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. Man, this is like the factory. They do all the packaging, the sorting, the changing of um, 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 item, molecules and protein, and then determine whether they leave the cell or they are staying in the cell. So these guys are very hard working. So that is what we can say for the cell. So right now, you need to find some way or ways to get these things into your head and find acronyms for it. So now let's talk about fun facts about the human cells. Now we say that cells that do the same job come together to form tissue. We say they're the basic units of life, but they eventually they come together to form tissue. And so they are able to locate themselves and then come together. And then we have reproduction. The cell pro reproduces through a process called mitosis which will be a topic for the for another day if you guys want me to address it and then like every other living thing the cell has a lifespan so various cells have different lifespans some have 13 days some have 120 days some have 18 months etc but when they die they are replaced almost immediately in a very healthy human being so there is no deficit it is always like a cycle this dies this is replaced this dies this is replaced that's how God has made it so wonderful. So, these are some of the. So I can say that um that is that for today. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions or any topic that you want me to address, you can hit me on the comment section and then we would interact and see the ways forward. Have a nice day. Bye.